I'm so glad I get to do these videos because all of this is mine now. <laughs> I'm gonna have one more. Mm, I love mm, the extra tomato and onion is just so delicious. That sauteed tomato flavor just gives it the right touch. These have gotten a little bit cold, but they're still so good. Mm -mm. Yum. Hey y'all, I'm Melissa Guerra. I am the Kitchen Wrangler, and today we're going to be making refried beans. The word refried beans comes from Spanish, frijoles refritos, which simply means beans that have been sauteed very well. They've been sauteed so well that they are velvety smooth and pureed and mashed and just absolutely gorgeous. Here in South Texas, we have them for breakfast, we have them for lunch, we have them for dinner, we have them for snacks, we have them when we are happy, when we're sad in any mood, any day, any occasion. We love them. I'm a super fan. So anyway, let me share my recipe with you. First, to get started, you'll need some cooked beans, and there's two ways to get those. One, you can cook them yourself, or two, you can buy canned beans. I prefer to cook beans at my house, and if you're wondering how to do that, then check my tutorial on how to make beans at home. I compared the Instant Pot with a regular pot, and you might be interested in the results that I found. Now, what kind of bean will you need for your refried beans? And for us here in South Texas, it's almost always pinto beans. You can use black beans or pink beans or yellow beans. All of those are great. I wouldn't use green beans, and I definitely wouldn't use lima beans, but pinto beans are usually the ones that we use. You can also use whole beans that are in a can. Now, I know that there are refried beans that are sold in cans as well, but have you ever tried them? I like them okay. My stomach says no. <laughs> They're not very good. Refried beans that come from a can usually have all sorts of crazy ingredients in them. And so I like to keep it simple. And so I make my refried beans from beans that I've made at home. So once you have your beans cooked, now it's time to make your frijoles refritos. Add a little bit of vegetable oil to a skillet and heat it on the stove. Now you might be wondering what kind of oil would you use? You can use any type of vegetable oil, corn oil, soybean oil, canola, it all works. I wouldn't use olive oil because the flavor is a little bit too strong for our refried beans. Traditionally, people would use manteca, which is great. And some people even like to use bacon drippings. All of those are really good, except if you're watching your cholesterol and that might push your daily cholesterol limit or your annual <laughs> cholesterol limit way beyond what you want. <laughs> so for the most part, I use vegetable oil. Once the vegetable oil is a little bit heated, then you add your whole beans and add a little bit of the broth too so your beans don't dry out too quickly. Once the beans are added to the pan, now it's time to mash them. And you do have a choice on the masher that you will use. Now, this is the traditional type it's wooden and I like the way this looks, but it's not very efficient, so I don't use this one. This is a wire masher, which of course you use for making mashed potatoes as well. They're inexpensive. They kind of do the job, but they're not my favorite. This one is my absolute favorite. I've had it for about 20 years. It kind of works like a potato ricer. It just mashes very efficiently, and this would be my choice for mashing your beans. Some people like to use either stick blenders or blenders to make the beans incredibly smooth. Again, not my choice. Uh, some people like it to be just like a paste. You need to use the type of masher that works for you. And uh, this one is my favorite, so I recommend it. As you're mashing, simply look for the whole beans and squash them. The beans need to simmer and reduce a little bit, but we're really not talking about cooking them because the beans were cooked to begin with. At this point, we're simmering them to get the right texture, the right thinness or thickness. If you want the beans a little bit thinner, add more broth. If you want them to be thicker, then simmer them a little bit longer. But don't take your eyes off of them because they will burn very, very quickly. And once they get a little bit burnt, they have a bad flavor and you can't you just cannot serve them. There's one more way that I want to show you for making refried beans, and this is my absolute favorite way. Add the vegetable oil to your skillet, but first we're going to add some chopped onions. Once those have sauteed and become soft, then we're going to add some chopped tomatoes and let those saute. Once those have sauteed for about two or three minutes, now we're going to add our whole beans and mash everything together. The pureed tomatoes, onions, and beans all together make them extra satisfying 
really hearty. I love this way of making refried beans. It's a wonderful dish for vegetarians. It's very, very filling. It's, try it. It is an absolute delicious side dish. It's great in the morning, lunch, dinner. You know what I said. It is always, always the right time for refried beans. So my refried beans, I finished them off with a little bit of queso cotija, which is kind of like Parmesan, It, but it's, has a little bit more moisture. It's very cheesy and very salty and super delicious. You can also use queso fresco. And I added a little bit of chopped cilantro. Again, incredibly delicious. One of my very, very favorite dishes. Mmm, very good. My husband made the tostadas and uh, I stole them. I'll have to tell him about it later. Well, as always, I'm so glad to see you here at the ranch with me. And don't forget, if you have any questions or any requests, you can email me at help at kitchenwrangler.com or message me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or here on YouTube. I'm Melissa Guerra. I am the Kitchen Wrangler, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here at the ranch again soon. Bye now.